Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Choir Master Organist at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. Each day, I've selected a different composer, one that's had a role to play with both organizations. Today, it's the Boston composer, Daniel Pinkham. Dan was born in 1923, died in 2006. I had the pleasure of meeting him on a number of occasions, and he would definitely be someone that you would call charming, absolutely charming. He got his BA from Harvard. He studied there with Walter Piston and Aaron Copeland. He studied harpsichord later with Wanda Landowska, organ with E. Power Biggs, and composition with Nadia Boulanger. I mean, folks, that is an impressive list of people. From 1959 to 2006, when he died, he was on the faculty at New England Conservatory and for 42 years was the organist at King's Chapel in Boston, that very historic place. He also was the organist and harpsichord player when called on with the Boston Symphony. And in 1990, the American Guild of Organists named him Composer of the Year. Well, there's so much music. I mean, he wrote just hundreds of pieces in all kinds of manners. And I thought I would start with a piece that he wrote um, that's called A Song for the Bells. It was actually written for a carillon. So you have to, as you're hearing this piece, you have to just kind of imagine the kind of clanging of the carillon. And I'll keep the pedal down because of course those sounds just kind of reverberate all the way through. I first played this piece in uh, 1962, I was a student at the University of Minnesota, and I loved this. They had a carillon, an electric one, in Northrop Auditorium. And uh, they wanted someone every day, Monday through Friday, from 5 to 5.30, to play the carillon as workers were leaving their buildings. They wanted it uh, just for uh, some soothing music. And uh, I said, well, sure, I could do that. I got paid a very small sum. But what I did get was that if I would agree to do it for one year, I would get a lifetime subscription to National Geographic, which I still get. I'm sure they had no idea when they put me on that that was going to happen. So here is the song for the bells. A Song for the Bells by Daniel Pinkham. He also 
as I mentioned, wrote so many different pieces in so many styles, but he loved a lot of the old music of the past, and especially some of the hymns and folk songs. And one of them that he arranged was that beautiful shape note song from 1835 called Wondrous Love. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? And he did a set of variations, and I'm just gonna play two of the variations for you to get a totally different kind of feel for what Pinkham could do. I first met Daniel Pinkham in the 1970s. He came to St. Paul to do a concert and there was going to be a, a piece that was a new work for organ, which he would play, harp and celesta. Why I was asked to play celesta, I don't know, but I did. It was my first of many times meeting Dan. It was a wonderful, grand and fun experience. He also wrote a lot of choral music. He wrote a charming piece for women's voices called Company at the Creche, which we have done here at Plymouth Church, which is a set of little movements, each about different animals visiting the manger. Another piece that he wrote is called Evergreen, a very simple piece. But one of the things that I have learned over the years is writing simple, effective music is the most difficult. You can write something that's very clangorous and huge, but to write something that's memorable and simple is much more challenging. Composers have often said that. And this little piece called Evergreen was exactly that. In 1957, uh, he wrote the piece that really brought him to great fame. It was a piece called Christmas Cantata. It was a set of three movements. It's with brass, choir, and organ. And the third movement, which is performed a lot, and justly so, is this set called Gloria in Excelsis Deo. And so if you can just imagine, it begins quietly with just the choir and the brass. It is kind of almost like thinking of a Renaissance piece. Then it gets a little bit stronger, and finally in the final section, the organ comes in, the brass are full, the choir is singing, and it's a grand, wonderful way to celebrate Christmas. Here is the third movement of Christmas Cantata by Daniel Pinkham.
Have a wonderful day.